Hello and welcome back to RKSP Career and the beauty that you see taking off is the Minmus robotic lander that we have designed lovingly in the previous episode. So if you haven't checked that out, uh, I will be providing the link to it. However, the goal, as I said, is Minmus for today. And the main purpose of this mission is, of course, grinding cash because I'm almost out of it. I mean, what space agency haven't you seen go broke? Yeah, almost. Anyway, however, this ship is designed of multiple components, which shall be revealed once the fairing is open. So I'm hoping that happens later on. But the purpose of the mission, as I said, would be to land the probe on Minmus, robotic one, and then take it off and return it back to Kerbin, containing all the juicy science experiments that will bring us a metric crap ton of science, an even bigger boat of cash. So, uh, we have some heating effects and we are, this is pretty much basic launch vehicle with our trusty mainsail at this point. 2.5 meter with an extensive fairing which contains, you will see exactly, okay, so the epoapsis is at 100 kilometers, which means we're just gonna coast up to the epoapsis and then we will be performing the circularization maneuver. And guys, I'm happy to say that my issues with double clicking are gone because I have simply replaced the mouse. Yes, it was too old. Anyway, there we go. Music kicking in, beauty, okay, 100 by 100 kilometer orbit, and let's align the maneuver prograde. We are already in the, you know, out of the atmosphere, which means I'm gonna decouple the fairing, and as you can see, the top of this craft is an actual lander, the one which you see unfolding the solar panels and the uh, antenna, and the four things attached to the rideshare adapter provided gently by Tundra Industries, which is of course SpaceX, uh, we are actually four relay satellites because my Minmus relays network is not the most reliable thing in the world. So that means before I actually go and deploy and land this, uh, you know, lander, to make sure that it doesn't litho break or become an impactor, uh, I need to deploy first the relay satellite network. So, see, explore Minmus probe. It is a probe, group a capacity nine, none, and we have milestones. First milestone is flyby Minmus, which means basically as long as we do a flyby. Then second milestone is orbit around Minmus, and the third one is land on Minmus, and fourth one I think is return home. So we will be getting some hundreds of thousands of bucks for doing so. So without fiddling, I'm actually now... I've skipped the part where I actually, you know, do the inclination change. I mean, you've seen me do it like millions of times, literally. So I'm just gonna go straight for the ejection burn. As, in, as you know, I'm skipping some parts which I already think are more than enough times covered in my playthrough so far so that you guys get a chance to just enjoy the new and you know interesting stuff let me know in the comments below how that suits you anyway i have no idea because i've already landed probes i have landed even people on minmus but for some reason these contracts have started popping up for the probes so i figured good way good amount of cash why not let's just do it all right so 200 meters per second to burn to actually get us in our Minmus ejection. I even think I see a Minmus a little bit like a little speck on the horizon just above the ant engine of the top uh, of the top uh, relay satellite. I think that's Minmus. I'm actually not sure. It seems like it's moving against the backdrop. Yeah, it could be that. All right, so we have even the moon. And we are leaving Kerbin. Bye bye. I've actually did a lot of planning when dimensioning this craft, so I was making sure that this time hopefully nothing goes wrong. Well, but you know, it's Kerbal Space Program. <laughs> it's actually hard to say if nothing will go wrong, but we are hoping for it. We're well equipped, and as I said, I spared no expense when designing these relay satellites and everything. So this time, this could be the first relay network that will actually work. Ha <laughs> ha! Magnetometer report, EVE space low, and we're still getting signs from our, you know, science uh, thingies. So, great. 
and there's the moon and we are getting around uh, Minmus. The sharp-eyed among you will probably notice one thing and let me know in the comments below what is it. I'm not, not just now working to get my, you know, periapsis to roughly 200 and something kilometers because I want this to be like a real relay network, so a decent uh, uh, periapsis and apoapsis above the minmus would be handy, so I figured out the direction that I want to be burning, so it's just a matter of fixing the periapsis and then we will be performing the circularization burn. Okay, so last chance for those of you who actually, who, um, who are sharp-eyed, if you want to leave a comment as what I'm doing, well, I wouldn't say wrong, but different here. I will let you know when we perform the orbital insertion burn, so. There's still time to put your things in the comments if you think, so, although uh, not a lot. All right, I think that's a good enough inclination. Let's point the craft, you know, maneuver prograde and add an alarm because I really want to be, have the alarm so that I know what I'm doing. Okay, there we go. Beautiful. Turn up some to a nice, you know, angle, enhance, and let's enjoy as Minmus becomes ever so bigger in our approach. It's not going to get too big because, as I said, we're going in a very high orbit. And there we go. So, have you figured out what did I do, well, wrong or differently? Well, it's very simple, actually. I'm going in the opposite. I'm going to be inserting myself in the orbit opposite of Minmus rotation. So that means we will be doing a counter orbit. I don't know if you can call it counter orbit, retrograde orbit. I don't know. I don't know what's the correct term. You can, you're feel free to post that in the comments if you think so. Anyway, so here I have put four deployment of, uh, you know, different satellites and I really wanted you guys to have a chance to just see all four being deployed because, I mean, it would get really repetitive when I did it. So I figured you guys might want to enjoy it and appreciate it, how it looks. Feel free to follow whichever one you like, but mainly the idea is I will put two pairs of two satellites. Two of w w will be inclined somewhere plus 30, 40-ish degrees, and another two will be minus 30, 40-ish degrees, which means <clears throat> all of those satellites will have a constant direct uh, line of sight towards Kerbin so that they can relay stuff, and they will be high enough so they don't get occluded by the min by Minmus at any point. <clears throat> and since it will be two pairs of different inclinations, of course, the signal can relay between them in various chances to actually, you know, they can relay the, the, the um, signal between them as well. All of them are equipped with the ant engine and some, some 700 meters per second, which is more than enough to put them in the correct inclination. And this is actually the, one of the reasons why I love playing with Tundra Rideshare, because you can fit a lot of those things over there. So, almost like Starlink, you know? This is like Minmus Link. So, right. So, now that being said, as you can see, all of these satellites are just now coasting until their appropriate apoapsis, periapsis, and fixing themselves in the correct, you know, inclinations. And once we are done that, we shall be proceeding with our Minmus robotic lander, because then we have the communications network in place. Once when the, this communications network is in place, then it's easy actually to control the craft, because you know you will have the signal almost all the time, regardless of the fact where you wherever you're landing and that's kind of my goal for the Minmus and probably there is another contract that will be similar for the moon so I'll probably since uh, we'll need to rework the lander itself but the rest of the craft might actually stay the same so there you can see slowly as I'm deploying all four I know it's actually hard to follow but I figured Nobody wants to watch me deploy all four in sequence. That would make this episode much longer than the 21 minutes that it already is. And, you know, there we go. So, we are just finishing up the final two insertions. So, that make sure that 
all of the satellites are in their correct inclination. Uh, okay, and we're down to the last one. I also make sure to rename them that they're called Relay Minmus Relays, you know, for naming issues because we have this big list in Kerbalism, so I think it's actually handy. All right, there we go. So that's how the, our relay network looks like. Now it's a matter of fixing the correct inclination with the main ship. And here I'm actually trying to get... Uh... By the way, this probe is actually our lander. And now this way we will be doing 108 meters per second inclination change so that we get it roughly in the same orbit as the, as the um, station that we had around in the orbit around Minmus. Right now the station is abandoned because, well, I'm not too good at shielding my Kerbals. However, and due to the various life support and all that constraints, but yeah. All right, here we go. Good. So now what I did, I actually changed the rotation because it doesn't take a lot. And now you can see that we are rotating in the correct, in the same way as, you know, Minmus is. And I'm gonna pick my landing spot. I was actually initially thinking to land in one of the lakes. Although, you know, to be perfectly honest, I've landed already in most of these lakes and uh, when I was doing the lander, so I'm actually thinking I might uh, even do rather, I don't know, maybe lowlands, midlands, somewhere in the hills so that I have a very, very nice view of Kerbin. All right. And I'm gonna use the rest of the crafts, you know, Delta V to help with the landing a little bit. There we go. Okay, we have a nice view of Kerbin. The whole idea was to land somewhere where we actually have a Kerbin on the horizon. That's kind of the idea what I'm shooting for. Let's hope I will be able to get a nice, you know, landing spot. There we go, Kerbin is starting to go on horizon, which means we should be settling down somewhere here in this Midlands. I think this is the Midlands biome. Yes, the Kerbal engineer is confirming that this is Midlands. All right, so, oh, this is too far away. Let's still burn and land somewhere here-ish. Uh, we might already be behind Kerbin, so let's go a little bit forward-ish. Yeah, as you can see, I have a lot of Delta V in remaining in this stage, which we I need to ditch before the landing, so might as well put it to good use and actually... I want definitely a base with a view. So that's the idea. All right. <clears throat> this seems like a nice, you know, horizon view of Kerbin. So let's see if we can land somewhere here. It's hard to tell because you don't know of the mountains, you never know if the Kerbin will be occluded or not, but then again, 520 meters per second, it's more than enough to get us even from here, I don't know. I wouldn't say to do now, but well, maybe with a gravity assist, I don't know. Alright, so we are going down a gently. I think those mountains will actually ruin my plans. Okay, let's ditch this. I think it will be a good view. Just... Okay, we are still 1,000 meters up. I mean, I have ultimately <clears throat> 1,600. So I'm not overly concerned. Oh, no. Come on, we lost track of Kerbin. No, I'm not gonna tolerate this. Okay, well, our impactor landed. Doesn't matter. I'm seeking for that perfect landing spot. I don't care. All right, so hopefully everything is going well and we'll probably land somewhere on these slopes, I guess. Maybe that will be a good place to, you know, land ourselves there we go and now slowly killing off our horizontal speed 
Let's see. Will this be a good, good landing spot? Alright, coming down. I want a good view. Let's go further to the front. Or, well, to the west, I would say. 270 degrees is westwards in Minmus terms, I guess. Alright, and now we will be killing all horizontal speed. I think this is actually a good place as any, so... It takes a little bit of this bouncing. Okay, I think we are... We have killed all the vertical velocity and now please tell me you won't go... You won't dip below the horizon. Come on, Kerbin. Stay there, will you? Okay, we are really close, so now I should focus on my landing rather than on my view. Okay, easy does it. The shadow is clear. 40 meters to go. Decreasing my velocity to roughly 1 meter per second. That's acceptable. These landing legs can definitely take it. There we go. Let's see. And there we go! A perfect view! That's what I was been looking for, guys. Amazing. Contract parameters complete. See, we've landed. Now, I'm going to do some more experiments. Seismic scan. I'm going to do the laser data. Bzzzt, bzzzt, D magic. 21 science. Thank you very much. Transmit it. And uh, then we have the toggle the hammer and we have the seismic scan. So this hammer is actually quite nice because it can collect seismic data. Dunk, 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 dunk. See, 14 additional science. I'm gonna grab that, thank you very much. I might as well, you know, be conducting some more experiments. This is beautiful. Let's collect some more laser data. I don't know if we managed to say, you know, successfully collect everything. I'm keeping that. And I'm thinking it's time for us to go back. Going eastwards, of course. Making sure to set our apoapsis to something acceptable. I don't know, say, 11 to between 11 and 15 there we go beautiful screenshot and then we're going back so now the final piece of this puzzle as you can see we have the return home and that's obviously we need to you know circularize and after that we will have the fiery re-entry and I'm actually hoping that this time it will survive because I actually tested the re-entry not from the minmus speeds though however the ablator should still be enough. So let's hope that our shield will work well. All right. We have 79 meters per second. As you can see, we have 1200 meters per second to, while we, when we arrive. I mean, that's a lot of Delta V, more than enough. There we go. Beautiful. Thank you, and now it's time to perform the ejection burn. That one is over there. I've managed to take a couple of tweaks, and with that one we want to lower our curb and periapsis to be somewhere around 30-40-ish range, because we want to dip far enough into the atmosphere that it stops us, but not so far that we immediately burn and, you know, like hit a brick wall or something. So here I'm actually planning for that maneuver. 150, less, less, no, not 70, that would just have us bounce off the atmosphere. So we have settled on a very nice curb and periapsis, I think, of around 30, 40-ish. 38, there we go. And now, laser surface scan sent. Okay, 21 credits, that's beautiful. So we are managing to collect as well some additional science from the surface of Minmus. Telemetry report, nice. You know, all of these small experiments actually contribute to the grander whole, which we will actually use to unlock all those wonderful things. All right, there we go. Bye-bye, Minmus, and hello, Kerbin and Fiery Re-Entry. I am going to actually use the, uh, the, the what el whatever Delta V I have left to actually decelerate us as much as possible. So that's why I stopped a little bit earlier. I didn't want to hit the atmosphere dead on just yet. I'm just gonna time warp and then keep the orbit retrograde. 
orientation until we get to roughly 100 kilometers more or less. There we go. Oh, look, we have we're going at screaming 3,200 meters per second. Yeah, so folded up the solar panels and now I'm going to use the remaining delta V to decelerate us as much as possible. There we go. Perfect. Ditching it and now let's trust that the heat shield will do its thing. Now, actually we are going at 2003 uh, 300 kilometers per second, which means it's actually almost like re-entering from Kerbin orbit. However, for your convenience, I've actually, I'm playing this at, I think, four times time acceleration, just so that we know, uh, there we go, we have gone through the worst thick of it, and now it's just decelerating to a regular full speed, and hopefully everything will go fine. I apologize once again for the blackness of it. Constantly forget adjusting this. Okay, we are three, two thousand, and we will be obviously landing in the water. Three hundred meters, and the parachute has deployed, which means this will be landing successfully. Oh, beautiful! I love a good mission when I see one. Tunk. Parameter complete and contract complete. We did it. Yes, we did. Beautiful, look at all those funds that we have gotten, and guys, I think it's time to wrap it up, so like if you like, and I'll see you in the next one.